I, of course, like many packages and libraries in Python, but probably my favorite package of all time is Pandas. I love it because it's just plain super easy to use and makes sense for a lot of my workflows in data science. That said, I also like machine learning and data sets can often get quite large. For example, we'll play with the data set today from Kaggle of UK property prices with over 28 million rows of data. Using vanilla pandas for this, despite how awesome it really is as a library and how efficient it is out of the box, arguably, uh, it would and will be very slow. In the past, I've simply employed the skill of patience for this problem, but today I'd like to show you the Pandas Accelerator from NVIDIA's Rapids Arsenal using QDF, which is a GPU accelerated data frame library. Historically, this library has been a bit of a challenge to deploy because if you wanted to use QDF, you needed to completely adopt QDF and make sure every operation that you performed in your program was functional within QDF. And given the scope of operations, even in a simple project, this made QDF almost unusable in practice, no matter how fast it ran for certain specific commands. And then, even if you did have full and perfect coverage, you'd still have to refactor all of your code, which no dev really wants to do. And then you'd probably have to maintain separate branches and all that. Nobody wants that. Instead, what NVIDIA has done is introduced a way to deploy QDF with a mere module flag when running the script or through an extension load in a notebook. And that's it. There's no other change necessary with a slight asterisk of maybe sometimes being explicit with data types. Uh, otherwise, you might run into some problems. And this came up in my testing, and I'll share with you all what I ran across. Uh, but at least in my testing so far, this is basically fair to say a drop-in functionality replacement that you should absolutely be using right now, today, and from now on with your Pandas data frames. This also includes, even if you just so happen to be using a library that also uses Pandas itself, because it will also accelerate that too. In order to install, it's just a pip install qdf q 11 or Q12 for the CUDA version that you're running. So let's see just how much performance we can get with a mere flag. I'm going to run the QDF pandas accelerator on the left and then regular pandas on the right. We could use the kind of time it magic and all of that, but this does weird things with variables and is really only useful for getting a really solid concrete sort of average time. Um, so my test here isn't going to be the most perfect of timing tests, but it's a real comparison nonetheless. And the kind of the difference between QDF and regular pandas is on the orders of like magnitudes, right? So, so um, we're not going to have um, an issue with a tenth of a second here and there. So anyways, uh, just know that this is basically, it's just one pass through. It's not the most perfect comparison, but it's good enough because the difference in performance here is massive. So the first cell in this notebook is just loading the accelerator for QDF. And then I just have like a comment for the other one, which is our regular pandas. Between the two notebook files, this is actually the only difference. These are otherwise identical notebooks. Uh, so next, what we're going to do is we're going to load the data into a data frame. Note that I'm explicitly setting the data type for price as int64, and this is what I was talking about earlier. The reason for this is in the data set itself, in that CSV file, it has these prices in, in quotes, like a string. Pandas with regular old Python actually still magically handles for this and allows us to perform math operations on strings as if they were ints um, or even floats. And this is just, I don't know, some magic going on in the back end of, of pandas to kind of handle for this when people do this. Um, but if you are having a problem with like inf infinity numbers and stuff like that, you'll want to go ahead and look at your data set and see if it's doing this. Because in my opinion, this isn't really, I'm not sure this is something I would expect anybody to handle for, even pandas. But just keep in mind that this could be a thing in your data set that pandas is just somehow magically handling for. But anyways, you're going to want to either make sure your data set doesn't do this, or you can explicitly set data types to handle for it just in case it does. As you can see, even just loading the data frame into memory sees a massive boost of a mere only like 2.9 seconds to load with QDF compared to almost a minute with regular pandas. 
The first time I ran through with QDF, I actually found that both took a, quite a bit of time to load. After some debugging, I realized that it was actually me loading from my NAS rather than from like a local storage on that machine. So network storage versus local storage. So just in case you're as dense as I am, uh, make sure your data is actually local. So in this case, it's on an NVMe, so it's much, much faster to load instead of loading over network. Once it's in memory though, it's kind of irrelevant where the data set started from, so it's all kind of a wash from there. Okay, so from this point, we can do a quick operation just to make sure things are working as intended and we'll get the length of the data frame, which looks good and is as expected. So then what we can do is grab all of the unique towns and cities. Interestingly enough, there is a slight delta here in favor of regular CPU pandas. The reason here is likely this is a CPU only operation. So then you're paying for some data transfer and overhead going CPU back to GPU. And I think that's the difference. That said, you're about to see why this difference is insignificant and irrelevant. But you might also wonder, what if you did a larger amount of these unique operations? I don't think I've ever done a unique call in a loop, but what if you did? Since I already had to redo this video once, I went ahead and just did a quick test for this particular operation. I looped through just over all of the columns and grabbed uniques from each of them, and it's still just a CPU only operation, but you can clearly see uh, it's not like CPU to GPU transfer is actually causing a 2x slowdown if you were to need to scale out a unique operation for any reason. Um, and actually, it even looks like the QDF version was slightly faster for this run. That's probably just by chance if, like I, like I was saying before, if we use the time it module for like little tiny differences like this, we might find that either they're basically identical or maybe sometimes the, the CPU is faster or whatever. But anyway, I just wanted to further poke into this and make sure that the overhead was actually as irrelevant as I was pretty sure it was. And in this case, it definitely is. So now what we're going to do is get the average home price for each unique town or city. This operation takes QDF 10 and a half seconds. For regular pandas, it takes 19 minutes. Uh, 10 seconds versus 19 minutes is absolutely insane. And again, this is a zero effort switch. If you already have an NVIDIA GPU, you've already got CUDA, all that, it's, it, you just install QDF, you call the flag, and boom, you're done. The same code also can run on the GPU if it's available or it could be CPU only. So you don't even need two separate code bases. Continuing on, what we're gonna do is we'll slice out just the year 2022 from this data frame and get just pricing information for that year. Surprisingly to me, this operation was also orders of magnitude faster with QDF than without. This is surprising because these dates were not even read in as daytime objects or anything fancy at all. They're actually simply strings. And the actual operation that per we're performing here to do that slice is actually just a string dot starts with. So this means there's actually some fancy QDF GPU method for string operations, which is particularly impressive and something that I did not, at least personally, expect to see here. And that brings us to the profiler. This lets us see exactly what's happening either closer to the QDF backend, showing us the operations running on QDF's side of things and what device it's running on, GPU or CPU, and then how long that's taking. Alternatively, we can also use the line profiler to show us sort of line by line what's running on the CPU or GPU and how long that's taking. So here we can see both the line profile and just regular profile on that data frame slice. Line profile shows us that actually that line of code is indeed done entirely on the GPU. We can then use the profiler to see what QDF is actually doing, and we can see that there's a get item method, and then that we do indeed have string methods, which includes some fancy starts with functionality, allowing this to run entirely on the GPU, despite the fact that it's just string operations, which is particularly awesome. Next, maybe we want to calculate the upper and lower 20% of home prices to discover areas with the most variance. So here's a slightly longer bit of code. We can again see that QDF is considerably faster here by about five times, and we can also do a line profile here to see what's going on. Finally, from here, after pulling all this kind of data, we might do something like some pure Python code to grab ratios for high and low, as well as maybe get an actual range and then kind of display maybe where are the biggest variances and stuff like that. 
So then finally, just a couple of quick common commands like finding the max for a column and a sort to just show off some more operations. But I really encourage you to install QDF and just use it on your own projects and stuff like that just to see how much faster it is and see what else might even just surprise you. Because like I said, I've, I had seen some of the demos, but then there were things that I just did not expect to be the case and that were definitely the case. And, and that was pretty cool to see. So anyway, uh, you can try the Pandas uh, Accelerator yourself via QDF by installing with pip install QDF Q11 or Q12. Also of note, you can run scripts too. So obviously not just notebooks. And the way that you can do this is with just the QDF.pandas module flag when you go to run that actual script and you'll get all the same performance speed ups. So that's all I have to show for now. This Pandas Accelerator from QDF is freaking awesome. I love how darn simple the implementation of it really is. And I look forward to seeing how this like rapid stuff just evolves over time. This has been many years in the making and this is oh, such a cool update to see. So if you have an NVIDIA GPU and you find yourself using Pandas, definitely try it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you find anything in particularly interesting or if you're having a hard time with something, leave a comment below. Um, I really was just pretty surprised at just how fast everything actually is, how well everything just simply works. If there isn't something, it just falls back to the CPU. But like I said, there was more coverage for GPU operations than I even expected, like the string methods. And that was just super cool to see. I'll leave uh, pip install commands and an example of running the script via the terminal in the description. There's also an official collab notebook example from the Rapids team that I will put in there as well. And then finally, there was an AI data science summit from NVIDIA very recently that also showcased this uh, Pandas accelerator, which you can also watch. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed and learned a cool new tool. I'm definitely going to be using this personally from now on, and I will see you all in another video.